<sighs> so this would be my review of the Flash movie. I literally just got out of the theater. I watched it on a Thursday night. There will be spoilers, tons of spoilers. I'm going to let loose on this movie. Uh, so if you haven't seen it yet, or you plan on seeing it, don't watch this review yet. Come back and watch it later, whatever, save it, because I'm going to just let it all out. All right, so I'll just start off with um, the theater wasn't packed at all, like not at all. Barely anyone there. I saw it on uh, 645 on a Thursday night. Probably the least amount of people I've seen in a premiere. Um, I went to an AMC, so it's a normal big theater. So where to begin? I like The Flash. I like The Flash a lot. Um, if you guys may or may not know, this was one of my most anticipated movies of the year because I was super excited. Now, I realized that... Um, Ezra Miller is doing his Ezra Miller things. So he, I don't know, going to jail. Who knows what's happening to him? So aside from that, when he first was in uh, the Dawn of Justice, I thought he was annoying. And I did not like his portrayal. And I really just couldn't stand him, to be honest. But the thing was, he was a bit part. And I thought, naively... I thought, well, maybe, just maybe, the people would have learned from their mistakes and watched that movie with an open mind and go, hmm, we should really just fix his character. That's what I was hoping. But that did not happen. In fact, it got worse. It got much worse. He is the main character of the movie Flash. He is the Flash. And let me tell you, he is so annoying. He is just insufferable. They try so hard to make him funny. So hard. So there's a joke every five or ten seconds. And 10% land. And so there will be a few chuckles and a few laughs that you will have there. But you also have to go through just so many bad, cringy, just like eye-rolling jokes and just like, Shut up, shut up, shut up. Like so many of those. And then to make things worse, he goes in a different timeline and finds another version of himself, which is even more annoying, like vastly more annoying. Like, and it makes the original annoying Flash look like not annoying at all. In fact, you're just like, this other guy just needs to go away. It's... And that's not what you want to do with your main character. You don't want to wish him to not be on screen because he's just that annoying. Um, so, yeah, and you just have to suffer through. There's many times I was just like, should I just leave? Like, But the, the worst part is, is there's a great movie in there. Just get rid of Ezra Miller. <laughs> so, like, if you just would have... and. It's just so annoying, but the movie has the bones of something great. And if they, the, like the story and the plot and all that kind of stuff is fantastic. I, I loved it. It's, it's just what I like in a Flash uh, movie. You know, got, you know, very sci-fi, alternate dimensions, time travels, all that kind of stuff. I love that stuff. A paradoxes, that, that's like my jam. And it has all that stuff, but... Ezra Miller are just so annoying, just so annoying. Like anytime something is about to get serious, one of the other two just acts super annoying. And it's weird. They kind of, at one point, one of them's like, okay, the super annoying one comes around. And so this one is acting like way more serious and like, they're like, oh, okay, we're getting along. And then all of a sudden this one will start acting serious. So then this one has to take the lead of being stupid. And, and that's the thing is it's like a Three Stooges movie. That's literally what you're watching is a Three Stooges movie, just like with the stupidity. And I love the Three Stooges, but there's a time and place for it. Um, he's just, and this is another thing that gets me. He's like a loser. He's a, just the biggest loser ever. And that you don't want your hero to be a loser. And unless there's this big arc where he just realizes the strength and heroism in him, and then by the end of it, he becomes the hero that you know and love and want him to be. Nope, doesn't do that. 
Um, he's just a big loser. He, he fumbles his words. He, he has this weird joke. He's like supposed to be like late 20s, maybe 30. And he says this weird joke where he's like, I know it's sex. I've heard of sex, although I've never had it before. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you just don't want your superhero to be the butt of the joke. It's one thing to have a few jokes on, you know, because of him, like be the butt of the joke a few times. But there's, you got to have, you know, charisma and courage and just, I don't know. He has none of that. It is, it's so, it's just so disheartening to watch. Okay. What about the other characters? Michael Keaton's Batman? Fantastic. Anytime he's on screen, love it. Killed it. Knocked it out of the park. Uh, gives you lots of member berries, you know, says a lot of the same lines since it were in the original Batman. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, and whenever he's on screen, Supergirl, I thought was just going to be like, oh no, here we go. Um, she was a little bit wooden, the actress trying to be like too tough, but it was fine. Um, and then there's this part where I thought like, oh no, here we go. He, she's fighting Zod. Okay, now if you remember Man of Steel, when Henry Cavill Superman fought Zod, most of the time it looked like Zod was pretty much winning and Superman was barely holding his own. Well, in this one, Supergirl is kicking the crap out of Zod. Like Zod doesn't even land a single punch. I think he pushes her one time and that's about it, but she like just stands and takes it. And I was like, oh no, here we go. And then she like literally just like almost kills him. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Like Henry Cavill's Superman, who was Superman on Earth for her, his whole life. And she just got out of the little chamber and just got her powers pretty much. And I was just like, oh no, here we go. Not this again. But then Zod ends up killing her. I told you to be spoilers. And I was like, oh, okay. And then they, did, they have to repeat the same, basically like the same day over and over and over, same battle. And she's getting the, her butt kicked. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. We are making it not like, you know, she can do anything type of thing. So Supergirl ended up being all right um, overall. She, but she's not in it that much. Um, who, else, who else was in it? Wonder Woman's in it. She's fine. Um, ben Affleck's Batman. Like, I liked it. He had a scene in there. Very, very good. Um, that's pretty much all the, like the main characters that I can think of. Um, Zod was in it, but he's just kind of like a bad guy and he didn't have too many lines, had a little bit of lines, but anyway, another thing that was terrible and you know, it's bad when my wife even points it out how bad it is. The CGI was terrible, not just bad, like really, 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 really bad. Like it looked, there's a bunch of babies that Flash had to save and it just looked terrible there's a dog that he saved and even my wife goes like remember the mask from 1995 and uh, Jim Carrey's dog puts on the mask she said it looked like that like cartoony bad the CGI was terrible and the thing that sucks is CGI is all over the place in this movie like 90% of this movie is CGI something CGI happening when Flash is running it just looks so so fake I'm serious when I say this I think the CW Show with the Flash has better CGI than this movie. It is abysmally bad. Like, really, really bad. After a while, I just like, whatever, it's just bad CGI. But I was like, it makes no sense because this movie was delayed like a year or two. Like, most of the times when they, you, they say they have bad CGI is because, oh, the people didn't get time to work on it. Well, they had no excuse for this one. It was just abysmal. It looked like they went on Fiverr.com and just hired some people on there to do their movie. It like, not to knock people on Fiverr, but I mean, they're not world-class CGI animators. It was terrible. It was, oh. It was just so bad. It was, there was no excuse for that. Um, Iris in it was n not needed. They gave her, they gave this kind of love connection for no reason when it was so painful to watch and so pointless to the movie. She did not need to be in it at all. It just added runtime for no reason, and it was just so awkward. And even my wife was like, she was so forward and made it look like she had an ulterior motive. And it's kind of, if you saw Shazam 2, 
like that girl that wanted to get close to Captain Marvel Jr., Freddy. She was so forward because she was using him. That's basically what it felt like, but Iris wasn't. It was just really awkward and bad chemistry. It's just like, I don't want to see that. That looks weird. It's just, stop. It's it's also the way Ezra Miller is. He's just, he's tr- like, he's trying to go for this quirky funny, but it just falls so flat. It's not good. He's not funny. There's a couple things. There's this one part I did laugh a lot, but it was at the expense of him. That's the thing is most of the jokes are at the expense of him. So it's like, is this the person you want to root for? No, it isn't. And yeah, but the, the story in there was really good. And at the ending, the, the last 15 minutes, I must say, you'll love it. Anyone that's a big comic fan and knows a lot of comic lore, you will love it. You will love it. You'll love it. Now, the bad CGI you get used to at this point because it's really, really bad at, towards the end, but you just kind of get used to it so it doesn't really affect you. You're just kind of like, oh, I've seen so much bad CGI for the last two hours that it's like you see it again. It's, it's fine. But any comic fan out there, the last 15 minutes, fantastic. Um, the, the, the movie actually gets really good the last like 20 or 30 minutes when the Ezra Millers are actually being serious and the, and the movie's moving along and actually doing something new and different and unique. I, I've seen similar stuff before, in, but like on a movie screen, it's very different and unique. So it's fantastic. And, and then the Easter eggs, I don't really want to spoil too much, um, but I guess if you're watching those spoilers. Okay, so they have um, Chris Reeves in it. Uh, they have, if you guys don't know the... I think it was, it was the Death of Superman, Return of Superman that are going to have with Nicolas Cage and was it Tim Burton was going to direct and Nicolas Cage was all set for it. They have him in there and he's fighting this giant spider because if you guys know the lore, the producer that was going to make that movie was obsessed with spiders and Kevin Smith had to write in this Superman fighting this giant spider, so stupid. And then the guy ended up writing for, or the guy ended up producing Wild Wild West where there was a giant spider. So he fights a giant spider. That's really cool. But then, then they pan to his face, and it's Nicolas Cage, but a CGI cartoony-looking version. And I'm like, why didn't you... Like, I get you can't do Chris Reeves, because, you know, rest in peace, but why didn't you just hire Nicolas Cage? And then my wife's like, oh, it's probably money reasons. They, he didn't, they he wanted too much money. I was like, first of all, Nicolas Cage loves Superman and comic books. He would have probably done it for the bare minimum. And second of all, when you use someone's likeness, you still have to pay them. So you can't just put Nicolas Cage CGI version on screen without paying him. So I am, I don't know. And there was, like, they're in this, like, the, whatever, it was the, the, the Speed Force, and they, every character in there is, like, from the normal world, but the CGI version of them, and it just looks so bad. It's just like, ooh. Oh, my God. So I was thoroughly disappointed, it, mostly because... The movie could have been good if you just if you just would have taken the CW Flash, I think his name Grant Gustinson, and throw him in there, movie would have been ten times better. Would have been fantastic. Just taking that Iris and that Flash, put him in this movie. Great. I probably would have given it a nine out of ten, ten out of ten. I don't know, somewhere in there, just because Ezra Miller is so insufferable and such a loser. And so annoying at all times. The jokes just, there's so many misses compared to Lance. And, but all the other characters are great, fantastic. Um, I really can't say anything wrong against the other characters. I liked them. It's just, oh, it's so, oh, he's so annoying. He's just so annoying. There was a point when I was like, I just want to leave. I literally just want to leave. He was just that bad. And I just, oh, I couldn't stand it. But um, if I had to give this a rating, I would say the story is good. It's a good story. The actor is bad. So you, you factor in a good story there. Like, it's worth, like, I love how it all kind of tied up in the end. I don't know what... Um, who was it? Uh, James Gunn was saying when he was like, oh, I watched it and it was so great. And he had nothing to do with the film, like trying to hype this movie up. I'm like, do you not have eyeballs? Like, what were you watching? The CGI was terrible. It was God awful. How could you give that a pass? And second of all, how can you watch that and think 
Ezra Miller, yeah, he's, he's a great Flash. Oh, yeah, my gosh. He knocked it out of the park. No, he's annoying. He's so annoying. Even my wife said he was annoying, but like she was like, well, it didn't really, like, who cares if he's annoying? He's supposed to be annoying. I'm like, no, he's not supposed to be annoying. And why do you want to watch a movie about an annoying guy? It's like lesser than likely from uh, Super Nintendo. It's like, no, I don't want to play that game. I guarantee no one will know that reference. But I don't know. Story's good. Batman's good. Supergirl's fine. Um, Zod's fine. Um, story's good. Like, I like the story. It's just the Flash himself, who it's, is his movie, is terrible. Uh, I don't know. Three out of ten. I mean, this is the type of movie that you will just want to watch clips of um, on, like, YouTube. Like, when you can get, like, the fighting clips and, like, the cool clips and stuff like that and cut out, like, 70% of the movie that you really don't need and doesn't really do anything other than him being annoying with a cut, some funny parts in there. Um, and first of all, Ezra Miller needs to take running lessons because he is a terrible runner. And you think someone like The Flash, you would train to run like an actual runner. He runs terribly. Um, yeah. Let me know what you guys think below if you've seen it. Um, 